Hi there. Thank you for joining me on Reading with Miss Jess. Today's story is All Rise, the story of Katanji Brown Jackson by Carol Boston Weatherford and illustrated by Ashley Evans. Whatever she did, wherever she was, Katanji Brown Jackson rose to the top. She rose on the hopes of grandparents who only finished grade school, but instilled in Katanji's parents the value of learning. She rose from the dedication and determination of her parents, who were the first in their families to go to college. She rose from her parents' pride in their heritage that inspired her African name, Katanji Onika, meaning lovely one. And on the birthday of Constance Baker Motley, the nation's first black female federal judge, Katanji rose to breathe her first breath, take her first glimpse, and cry her first cry. Wearing Afro puffs and an African dashiki, she rose from the civil rights movement that pushed open doors in the decade before her birth. The gains of the movement gave her parents hope that the way would be easier for Katanji and her little brother, Kataj. My parents set out to teach me that if I worked hard and believed in myself, I could do anything or be anything I wanted to be, she said. Katanji rose from her family's dining room table where she sat coloring while her father studied his law school textbooks. She rose above her family's sadness for an uncle who was in jail on drug charges. She barely knew him beyond his occasional phone calls, but she learned that there was a right and a wrong side of the law. Katanji rose among her peers to be elected mayor of Palmetto Junior High School and three-time president of Miami Palmetto Senior High School. She rose above the slight when a teacher would not cast her as a family member in a play because she was not white. Katanji rose from acting and singing to conquering the debate stage where she won national awards for public speaking. Under the wing of her debate coach, Mrs. Fran Berger, Katanji thrived. Mrs. Berger believed in me and in turn, I believed in myself. She rose above the debate judges who mocked her African name. She'd respond by saying it clearly and writing it on the board. K-E- T-A-N-J-I. She rose above a guidance counselor's doubts that she could get into Harvard, whose campus she had first visited for a speech competition. Instead of lowering her goals, Katanji vowed, I'll show them. Katanji rose above her high school classmates to be named in the yearbook as most talented and most likely to succeed. In that same yearbook, she mapped out her future. I want to go into law and eventually have a judicial appointment. Once at Harvard, Katanji rose above lonely days as a first year college student, thanks to her mother's birthday greeting and a stranger's advice to persevere. With a diverse group of friends, she acted in plays, even writing one, and joined in student protests but she always put her studies first. Katanji rose from a Harvard College honor graduate and a reporter for Time Magazine to a Harvard Law student and an editor of the school's prestigious law journal. She rose from the examples of service set by her mother, a school principal, her father, a school board lawyer, and her uncles, both police officers. She rose to clerk for judges and to work as a public defender, representing people who could not afford to pay for a lawyer. And finally, Katanji rose to reach her goal of becoming a federal judge, but she did not stop there. She rose to become an inspiration for her own two daughters, 
Her youngest, Layla, wrote a letter urging President Barack Obama to nominate her to the U.S. Supreme Court. But the timing was not right. Not yet. Then, six years later, President Joe Biden nominated Judge Katanji Brown Jackson as an associate justice, calling her one of the brightest legal minds. At the announcement, she rose to give thanks. My life has been blessed beyond measure, and I do know that one can only come this far by faith. In four days of Senate Judiciary Committee hearings, she rose above tough questions, kept her calm, and stood her ground. I have dedicated my career to ensuring that the words engraved on the front of the Supreme Court building, equal justice under law, are a reality and not just an ideal. As Vice President Kamala Harris, the first woman African-American and Asian-American in that position, presided over the Senate vote to confirm Jackson's nomination, she penned a note to her goddaughter. I sit here with a deep sense of pride and joy for this moment in our history and what I believe it will mean for you and all the current young and future leaders of our country. The next day on the White House lawn, the president, the vice president, and the newly confirmed nominee celebrated the victorious vote. President Biden introduced the then soon to be associate justice. In America, he said, everyone should be able to go as far as their hard work and God given talent will take them. Then, Katanji Brown Jackson rose, quoting Maya Angelou's famous poem, Still I Rise she framed the long journey to justice. It has taken 232 years and 115 prior appointments for a black woman to be selected to serve on the Supreme Court of the United States. But we've made it. We've made it, all of us. For every brown-skinned girl and every black woman who was ever overlooked or underestimated when opportunities were doled out, Katanji Brown Jackson rose. I'm standing on the shoulders of my own role models, and our children are telling me that they see now, more than ever, that here in America, anything is possible. On June 30th, 2022, with her husband and daughters present, Katanji Brown Jackson rose to take her oaths. For President Biden, her swearing in signaled a new dawn. Katanji Brown Jackson's rise to the highest court in the land, he said, makes the sun shine on so many of us in a new way. Though just shy of five feet, Katanji Brown Jackson stands tall among American jurists and is herself a role model for children everywhere. <laughs> 